Uh, we're we're going to be looking at 3D embossing now. Now, Tim, Tim Holtz has taken 3D <laughs> embossing to new heights, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> these, these two uh, are just quite incredible. And there's one particular one. If you love your creepy Halloween stuff, you are going to love this. This is Skulls. Oh. Check that out. How about that? Then after that, we have Acorn. So that's ah. another lovely one. And let me, let me just show you how they come out. Now, for these, we've used gilding wax. So to get, to get that detail, I've used Those silver, skulls. gold, and rose gold in there. Oh. And that's just with gilding. But look at the depth in that, Lou. Look at the skulls. Look at how the curve, the detail, everything, everything about it. And this is the it thing, is isn't it, with 3D embossing now. We actually get curves rather than those right angles yeah. that we used to get. And it just makes all the difference. But I'm, I'm going to share with you a, a technique that, that I have done before. So I'm going to come, come back to my machine. Uh, and, and I'm going to, um, because this technique really, really does bring them to the fore. So what I'm doing, I've got some card. It's some torn black card. I've just torn the edges. And I'm applying a little water to both front and back. Now, the reason I do that is because it helps the fibers stretch. Because one of the things about 3D embossing is that, obviously, it puts the card under a lot of stress as it goes through the machine. So what you want the fibers to do, you want them to stretch mold to the embossing fold. You don't want them to tear or rip. And uh, that's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So okay. let's pop that. So then I pop that to the 3D folder. And with this, you only need one cutting plate and directly onto the base of your platform. So let's run that through. There we have it now. 3D embossing, to get the best out, I recommend you run it through at least twice. Okay. It's going to come out great after one, but the, the more that you do it, I mean, don't go on forever, but um, the more that you do it, three is, a, is about all you need. The more you do it, the deeper the emboss, more detail that, that comes I out. I suppose now. it's I'm, a little bit, I don't know whether you've ever done it, Pete, but I used to do parchment craft and you used to have to right. go over the design, let it just rest for a second and then go over it again. Let it, and it stretched the fibres of the paper gently uh, and gave a deeper emboss or deeper impression that, on it. That, that, makes, that makes perfect sense, actually. Um, with, with these, of course, it's, it's not a gentle process which is why you need the water as well. But, but the depth, I, I, you're picking that up, the depth of the Absolutely. I mean, even now, without you looks, highlighting that, it looks stunning. It, it looks great. I mean, it looks great just in the black. But um, when, you, when, you start, when you start adding the colours, that's when it really comes to life. So let me, let me bring my, my craft map back in. And James will tell me, am I in the centre of the shop? Bit back a bit. We're, he's doing the universal go, life. That's back, good. A, back a bit, back it back a bit we got perfect he's giving me the double thumbs up right now <laughs> let's let's go let's look at two so these are two that i did earlier i let them dry because i like to work on them when they're and i usually let them dry naturally rather than heat set them um so i'm going to take i'm going to take some some brown acrylic and these are matte acrylics these are tim's uh, very own collection the uh Ranger Distress okay. Acrylics. So they do coordinate with the Distress Inks, Distress Oxides, and indeed all of the Distress products that so we have. So do they have so, the same names or are they just... Yeah, in, indeed. Yeah, all the colours. So whether it's Distress Crayon, Inks, Folders, it's, it's all the same, same name. So if you have, um, say, for example, uh, a Wild Honey Distress Ink, the Oxide and everything, sometimes those are not exactly the same but it's in that sort of tonal palette yes, so obviously that oxides well. yeah so it, it's the same kind of thing really. i think i noticed it most with uh, black soot across the ink and the oxide um, yeah yeah it's yeah there, the there is there is a very sort of subtle difference there but because they're different kind of techniques that's almost inevitable yeah. it's, it's hard to get it perfect and you know work. what if anything you get it perfect mr holtz would be that so so I'm bringing again. I'm working from I'm working from dark to light. So we start off with a very dark brown there, and sometimes I'm dragging. Sometimes to get some extra detail, I'm actually patting it onto the card like so, 
and then continuing my my drag as it goes down. Um, yeah. Finally, we're going with a, with a lovely mustard type colour. I think this one's maybe fossilised amber. Right. Yeah, remember. Yeah, there um, we are. Crafty Makes on YouTube has just said, Rem I remember that watery uh, spray tip from one of your lives a long time ago and it has changed my embossing so much. Thanks again for sharing. Oh, no, that's a pleasure. I'm so glad. It's it's something that, that I think um, I picked up from somebody at some point. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, always, it's good to share. Isn't it? It it's is one of those share. things that now I just automatically do. It's just a yeah. habit now, and that's probably from you. And um, Rena Hurst has said her husband bought some three D Tim Holtz folders to use on his leather projects, and they work so well. Do you know what they, they do um, on, on leather? It, it's quite incredible. You know, and, and try different leathers. Get get like chamois leather. Get strips of leather. Mm -hmm. Anything you see, go go into go into your local. Um, Charity shop and yep. see if there's any leather goods, any old leather jackets maybe that could be cut up. It's incredible. But again, if you soak the leather prior to, um, works on sweat as well, of course. But if you soak it prior to um, embossing, it sets absolutely rock solid. It, it's it's a brilliant surface to work on. I can see um, everyone flocking to their local uh, charity shops, thrift stores, car boot sales this do weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to show off a bit here. Because I, the leather that I use comes from the Rolex factory in Switzerland. No. Yeah. And, well, do you know what I was? I was doing years ago. Years ago, I was doing. Uh, I was doing some education, doing a workshop for our Swiss distributor, and there was a lady who asked me. Um, she said, "Does it emboss onto leather?" And I said, "I really don't know." She said, "Well, I've got, I've got a lot of leather," and it turned out that her husband worked in the Rolex factory, which made those lovely watches. And the offsets from the straps and the things that lined the boxes, he used to bring bags and bags of it home. And she said, oh, I'll go home lunchtime. I just live up the road. And she brought me, I think I threw half my clothes out of my suitcase just to fit all this lovely leather. <laughs> yeah. But I've still got a few scraps left, and, but I keep it for high days and holidays now. But they, wow. So we just used two colours there. We've used yep. a lovely deep blue-grey. And we've used a lovely, um, that, that kind of uh, sort of off white. Oh on my, the top. that is just, I was just looking at my phone briefly and I just looked up those skulls. That, it just looked, it looks 3D. It's, I know it is, but. Isn't it great? Oh. It's really, really cool. Hey, how about turning those into lovely bookmarks? Phenomenal. It could be a great background. Let's take a look at some other techniques as well. Uh, oh, there's one with, with a kind of a patina where it's been rubbed away Gorgeous. and some rust. Over the top, then we've got oh, that's quite similar to the one we saw before. But and, uh, one it. way we did for for a display that we did recently, I'll just put those down. Um, we we did some lovely, lovely little books. Oh, so, um, look! So that one with with the ribbon on the side. Perfect. Uh, yeah, there you go. So if you do having a Halloween party and you want the centerpiece, this is just an old. I think it's a French dictionary. I think I bought it in again, a charity. Shop. Yeah, again, charity shops have loads of books. I got lots for oh, my yeah. wedding to decorate, and um, yeah, I'm still reading. Never, them. never, th never throw those old books out. You can see these were displays, so the, the backs are unfinished. But yeah, but there's, they're really, really cool. And when you see those three kind of, kind of stacked up like that, wow, it's pretty. Um, pretty